I can't remember the last time I was unhappy. I just can't remember. One of the, the, the biggest achievements I've got is getting to the point where my fat box was empty. Over a period of a couple of years, my conscious mind, my naughty monkey, probably thought to itself, well, my days of freedom are over, but that's okay because I'm only going down happy roads. Good morning. Um, we're going to do a bit of a different video today. I'm here with a young chap named Paul Wallace. Some of you might have seen him on various uh, videos that he did with Tyrish Times. He's a good friend of mine. He doesn't live too far away and he's a very, very interesting chap. We're going to talk about a few things today. I'm not sure how the video is going to go, um, but you've been here for a long time, mate, right? 38 I, I years. Let me ask you this for a, for a start. How on earth have you survived okay. for that long, mate? Right. Well, one thing we have to understand is that before I even set foot in this country, I would, I was what you would call an extreme backpacker. Yeah. You know, in other words, going to a, a foreign country with very little money, uh, very little knowledge, because there wasn't the internet in those days, and. Uh, if I can, you know, by the time I arrived in Thailand, which was what, 1985 or 1986? Yeah. I was already invincible, you know. So it wasn't a big deal for me to come here with very little. I think I had about $1,000. Um, and when that went, uh, I knew that I'd be fine because I always have been. Right. You know, right. so, right. so it, 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 to a young person now that, you know, coming to Thailand on a one-way ticket, you probably can't do that now with very little money they would be like well wow that's that's just out out of the park but for me it wasn't right you know i i the only unexpected thing that happened jim and this is pretty amazing i think right up until the time i arrived in thailand i had this wanderlust to travel right you know i even used to backpacking i'd be thinking to myself am i going to be doing this when i'm 40 50 60 what's the point of it all why am i doing it and when i arrived in thailand within 24 hours that 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 inner feeling of wanting to see new places just vanished it vanished totally vanished right okay i knew as early as the first day that this is the place i'm going to spend the rest of my life my 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 traveling is over and, and how old were you then mate when you arrived roughly 28, 29. Okay, I'd, she... I'd already been to more than 50 countries. Oh, wow. And I can tell okay. you okay. exactly the first thing that registered with me that Thailand is different. I'd look at the, the faces of the people, you know, just ordinary Thai people, and, and they're radiating this happiness right. that I'd never seen anywhere else. I mean, they were joyfully, blissfully happy. All of them were. And that, I thought to myself, I need to find out why. Why is that? And it okay. didn't take me long to okay. realize that it was Buddhism. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Really? Buddhism. Interesting. What, what they were doing is they were living in the moment. Mm. And now, living in the moment can be misconceived by many people. Mm. Some people think living in the moment, okay, so that means you don't plan for anything. Sure. You just throw it all open well really living in the moment doesn't mean that you can still have goals you can still set objectives and have plans living in the moment basically means to to extract as much happiness from a passing moment mm. yeah just simply that so you could be sitting here maybe yeah, like we are like, now like right now yeah. you could look and see a bird in the tree and you could think to yourself what an amazing place this world is or you could be thinking shit i've got to go and do this this afternoon and i really don't want to do it now my point is that that passing second is gone you know time never stops yeah if it was filled with happiness and you keep doing that what do you have you have a happy life okay you have a happy life okay i once asked an old buddhist monk down in nakon si tamarat 
I can speak Thai well, so, so I used to ask him about the meaning of life and all this kind of thing. And I said to him, you know, how do you have a happy life? Do you know? Is it what you guys are doing? And he looked at me and he said, okay, what is a life? So I'll ask you the same question. Mm. What is a life, Kim? Life is a series of experiences. And, it's a continuation of know? moments, isn't sure, it? Sure, yeah? sure. Right. So it starts when you're born mm. and it ends when you die. Mm. Now, this monk said to me, every single one of those moments that, that passes through your life, if you make it your goal to extract as much pleasure as you can out of it, irrespective of what you're doing, then what do you have by default? And I thought about it for a while, I thought, well, lots of happy moments. Hmm. And he said, more than that, a happy life. Is that not what you have if you follow that principle? And I thought to myself, yeah, he's got it. So I started to make it my goal just to remind myself, you know, where I am. I mean, look at this place. I'm in heaven, you know? Uh, I'm blissful and I'm always blissful because I understand the value of being able to control your thoughts. Mm. I don't let my mind go anywhere if I don't want it to go there. Okay. That took years, by the way. Okay, so... So through, through this way of living, you've probably managed to, would you say you've controlled your emotions or, you, or you've put them to, to bay or they're just not as important anymore? Um, about eight years ago, I had a realization that yes, what you do think about does affect you. It affects outcomes. Okay. So I trained my mind to do certain things. Never think about negative stuff, okay. ever. And if I'm confronted with something negative, then I flip it to a positive. That's very important. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And it took me years. And, and, and I've reached the point now where I, I am emotionally detached from everyone and everything. That's quite a bold statement that's, to make. That's a really bold statement. So you say you're emotionally detached like that. Yes. Let's, um, oh. now, now, a lot of people will think, so, so he doesn't give a, a fuck about his family yeah. then? Well, no, that's, that's not it at all. Right. I do the right things. If you care for somebody, yeah, and you want to help somebody, then mm. you do the right thing at the right time, don't right, you? Okay. Right, okay. I do all those things, except I don't have the emotional baggage that goes with it. Okay. And about four years ago, something happened, and mm. I was quite proud of myself, I've got to tell you. Okay. My dog of 17 years, mm -hmm. who I got when she was about that big, yeah got killed right in front of me. Wow. Okay. And, and I watched her die. Yep. And as it was over, I thought, Jesus Christ, not a blip of emotion wow. was there at all. Wow. And that made me realize that, yes, I have reached this point now. And it's not just people, it's stuff, you know? Mate, I've got goosebumps because you know what, if that was me, I'm not at that moment at all yet. I'm, I'm very much in, 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 in the moment in my life trying to be happy right. in every moment possible and, and, and believe that's the meaning of life. But at the moment, I would, um, mm. I would put the dog, if, if my dog died in front of me now, I'm not at that level, I'd be in bits. So sure, I really absolutely. Would, mate. I'd be yes. an emotional absolutely. mess. And I mean, a mess. And you, and you know what it gives you when you're emotionally detached from everyone and everything? Right. It gives you a level of clarity. Mm. You can make decisions that are not based on how you feel, you know? If I came out of a supermarket and saw somebody sitting on the bonnet of my car, wouldn't, wouldn't phase me in the slightest. Because <laughs> you know not how- Not the slightest. You know how I'm gonna react to that, don't you? So, yeah, I, I need to get there, mate. I I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm as emotionally detached as one could get. And so, I, I, I mistakenly thought at the beginning, Okay. It, it meant to have no feelings whatsoever, to right. be like stone. Okay. And then I thought, no, this is not right. It, it, so it's, it's basically, you're cutting off any, any negative thought or any attachment to anything, but you still feel love, you still feel kindness, you feel compassion, you know, you love everything and everybody. I'm not trying to destroy all emotional response. Mm. I'm being very selective about which ones I promote and which ones I eliminate. 
ride okay. So it's, it's about eliminating the, the, the bad emotions. Probably, the negativity. Yeah. Yes. Negativity, so anger yeah. and all stuff like that. And I, we'll have a little break here because I think I can see him going for his pockets. I think he might be looking for his smokes. One Could minute. well be. <laughs> there you go. I could say this, Jim, and, and it's a bit of a boast, but I thought about it the other day for the first time in a long time. I can't remember the last time I was unhappy. I just can't remember it. Wow. So it's got to be years ago, you know. It may have been a conflict with a teacher, or it may have been, I don't know, a mate letting me down, but I can't remember the last time I felt unhappy. Wow. So yeah, I have a I have a wonderful wadi cap, lan ne cap. I can't remember the last time I was unhappy, and to me that is more valuable than anything else. If you said to me, okay, there's a hundred million dollars here, Paul, you can have that, right? But you've got to lose this blissful state you're in inside your head. No contest. No wow. contest. Wow. I think about it like this. Um, Every response that we, every interaction that we have with any other human being, mm -hmm. like it or not, people are judging. People are always judging, you know? They're evaluating you, they're assessing you. And one of the, one of the, the, the biggest achievements I've got is getting to the point where my fuck box was empty, you know? Absolutely do not care, and it doesn't affect me what other people think about me. I'm, I'm me, that's what I am, that's who I am, uh, warts and all. What a great place to be, Paul. What a great, I've been striving for that for, for decades, mate. Yes. Uh, about truly, I always say, oh, I don't care what anybody thinks, but you know what? But you do, yeah. You do to you some do. degree, of you really you do. do. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a, a fantastic trait to be able to, to, to aim for. How, how would you say you've managed to be able to, 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 to get rid of emotion stuff? Do you, do you think you've, Strictly sort of follows the followed the Buddhist rules, or you've just sort of observed and sort of no, seen I, the way. No, I, I I I watched a very very good interview with a guy who understands the law of attraction. Okay. And in that video, he said, "Your mind can be trained." You know, he said, "The the thing that the that, that really can mess us all up." Is, he calls it the naughty monkey. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's your it's your conscious mind. Right. Now, for for too many people, they are spending all their time reacting to thoughts they have about certain things. And and, and so there's always an, an, an emotional response to something. Well, this guy taught me that well no, if you can control what the conscious mind does, in other words, if you can put a lead on the naughty monkey, yep. you're gonna be fine. And the naughty monkey needs exercise. You can't keep it on a lead all the time. Okay. You can't not think about stuff. Okay. So when you're when I'm working, I'm really engaged in what I'm doing. I'm really focused. And after three or four hours, my naughty monkey, he's tired. So because he's tired, it's easier to tie him to a tree. And guess what? Yep. The longer you do it, you don't need the leash. I took the leash off my naughty monkey now. It wouldn't it wouldn't even contemplate going down a negative or dark avenue. So so when you say a naughty a naughty monkey, I mean you're talking about as well like a lot of people call it the the, the, the angel and demon on our shoulder, that sort of thing. Would it be the, the more well, negative it, it, side? It's just when you give your conscious mind the freedom to think about what it wants, yep. what does it think about? Yeah. Okay. In other words, if you are not controlling what you think about, if it's a question of, well, I see something and I respond, or I hear something and I respond, yeah. then I would say you are not the driver of the vehicle. Okay. If you are the driver of the vehicle, you decide mm. what you think about. Okay. Okay, you're not controlled by your... No, you're not controlled. You don't respond in the same way if you're not emotionally detached. Mm -hmm. And... So let me ask you this: If you, if you do have a, a negative thought process, do you just put the barrier up straight away and just no? Not... I flip it to a positive. Interesting. I could be online and suddenly there's a news flash: you know, 79 people killed um, with a with a Pan Am flight, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. My first thought is, good job the plane wasn't full, and then I move on. So I okay. flip it to a okay. positive. Okay. Okay. Now I would challenge you now, Jim. I'll yeah. challenge you Go on. to come up with a hypothetical situation. Yeah. 
that I couldn't flip into a positive. There you go. Do you know I could get really dark here, and I, I don't. I, no, I don't want to get. No, I don't, don't want to get too dark. Okay. Um, it's a woman and two children over there. Mm -hmm. we're, we're sitting right next to a really uh, big canal. By the way, I just I just turned that around quickly just to see. That's Kong Sen Sat that there, but we're quite far out on it. So there's a, a woman and her two children over there. There's a dog. Right. Dog falls in. Right. One kid jumps in to save it, followed by the other kid, followed by the mum. All three die and the dog dies okay well i would just think well it was a good job the father wasn't there as well okay and then move on yeah and then move on i guess yeah okay there's a there's a there's a it is possible to flip any negative into a positive like a glass half yeah. full situation yeah 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 and then i move on and and for me it, what i give my attention to is very important okay i won't give my attention to something if it's not positive or conducive to, to being good. I just won't give it my attention. Interesting. And if you don't give it your attention, then there's no, there's no chance of you having a remotion, an emotional response to it or its negativity affecting you because you just don't give it your attention. Do you know what? I can actually vouch for this. I've said something to Paul before on more than one. I'm just noticing this right now. As he said that, there's a couple of times where I've said something negative and he's just looked at his computer screen and yeah. continued to do something else and I thought hang on yeah. he, mu he must be a bit busy there for a minute but I've just no. just explained I it. don't give it my attention that makes sense mate that makes sense for That's me for, well, this might sound crazy but yeah. for me what what is going on between my ears is the most important thing in my life I've been blissful for a couple of years three four years now and so far nothing has managed to to penetrate that. Let me ask you this then. So, you've managed to live here for 38 years. Um, and counting. And counting, yeah. Do you think if you hadn't sort of had this mindset, do you think you would have lasted as long? Do you think you would have... How would it have been different, do you think? Face the camera. I think, I think, I think without a doubt, coming to Thailand was a big thing because had I not come here, I wouldn't have got the introduction to Buddhism. And I think that Buddhism is the key. That's what got me going okay. on, on the things I believe in, the things that I, I think are, are, you know, actually happen. So I don't know if I'd have fat, fell in love with um, Costa Rica and spent 35 years there. I don't know where I would be right now in my head. Mm. But I would say my only regret in life, and I only have one. Okay. I didn't come to Thailand earlier. Wow. Okay. That's. that's I've got a, I'm sure most of you agree there. That's a pretty pretty good regret to have. And my it? love affair with this country, which started mm. the day I got off the plane, is still fueled as as passionate as it was uh, on that day after 38 years. I must admit, I have to. I, I would say something at this point. If if you've any of you seen some of the some of the the, the, the stories that Paul told with Tyrus Times and some of the interviews and stuff didn't really come across that that he really Paul has really immersed himself in Thai culture in the fact that he can speak Thai very very well I mean he said to me once he doesn't think there's a conversation that we could get into in Thai there not, is not with me that he couldn't talk himself out of and and uh, do you know what and having seen him in action it's very easy to look at somebody like Paul and 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 you know what I mean go yeah but what about the negative things you know or say something negative in the comments but you know what he speaks Thai he, he lives locally, he eats Thai, he really has immersed himself in the full, the full Thai culture, I think. I, I yeah. would agree with more, you. More than most. I could have a conversation with the CEO about marketing, a philosopher about the meaning of life, and I could have a good conversation with the security guard about Liverpool this season. That's yeah, a good place to be, mate. No problem. Yeah, yeah. That's a good place to be. But I only got that because when you feel you're going to get a feeling that you feel you've never felt before. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I see what he's saying there. I, I'm some way there. I've, I, I'm there, Paul, in the fact that I've realised that the key to life, or people talk about the meaning of life and they go on these big, long essays about it, is simple. Being happy. Absolutely. Surely is yes. the key to life. Yes. And, and, I, and, and, and I think more people need to understand that happiness is not something you can obtain externally, you know? Buying stuff might temporarily might make you feel good, but at the end of the day, happiness comes from within. And once I realised that, you know, 
once I realised that three core concepts I live by. One, I love everybody and everything. You know why? Because I believe that you, that guy over there, that lovely little jay bird over there, we're all part of the same unified field. And we're all experiencing our life from that perception that we have. So why would I want to harm myself? You know, so number one, love everybody and everything. You know, even a mosquito has as much right to be here as I do. Number two, never think about negative things. And number three, enjoy the moment. So if you can crack those three things, you've got to be happy. There's no way you can't. Would you say it involves a certain amount as well of um, uh, not dwelling in the past and not looking too much to the future and more living Well, in the I can tell you the way I did it. Mm. Right? I got to understand that if you talk to yourself, yep. right, that's very powerful. So I used to start saying things to myself, right, I'm in charge now, I'm driving, we don't think about this, anything negative that comes along, we just block it and move on. Okay. And from here on in, I'm in charge. And I would tell myself how I'm going to be. Have you ever had to get up early in the morning and you said to yourself, just as you're going to step, I've got to get up at 4.30, I've got to get up at 4.30, set the alarm. 4.25, you wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah that happens well, a lot. You're telling your, your subconscious what you want to happen. Right. And so I used to do that a lot. I don't need to do it anymore. But I used to have long conversations with myself but they were all one-sided. Okay. I didn't give my subconscious a chance to reply. You know. So this is the way it is, right? When you see something good that happens, embrace it. You know, don't be jealous or envious yep. of other people. Embrace it all. And, and, and over a period of a couple of years, my conscious mind, my naughty monkey, probably thought to itself, well, my days of freedom are over, but that's okay because I'm only going down happy roads. I like that, mate. I like, I like that little line there, mate. Yeah. I like that. And, and the way I view it is this. It is like a naughty monkey because sometimes we can't control it, you know? You, think, you start thinking about, oh, God, I hope that. Imagine what would happen if that happened. Oh, my God. And then you, you go down that road even further. And, and all you're doing is creating a bad feeling within yourself. So I, I refuse to let my monkey do that. Back, naughty monkey. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And he's not on a leash anymore. He follows me everywhere I go. He's okay. sitting here right now. Okay. And he's busy right now, you know, which is good. So, yeah. I mean, it isn't rocket science to me. Don't you mind? So, Paul was just telling me as well that um, it's literally been years since he worried about anything. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in that mindset of not really worrying about anything at all? I don't think I've ever been there personally, so yeah, I think this is a very, very interesting subject and one, one that I'm interested in hearing a little bit more. I mean, more. Uh, when I say I don't worry, let me try and clarify that. that. If there's a situation coming up where there's a possibility or a likelihood that it's not going to turn out favourable, I'll give it constructive thought. I will, you know. Okay. Well, what's the best thing to do here? But I won't worry about it because worry is all you're doing is you're, you're you're trying to predict a future outcome and you don't know but you're you're worried that it might be that way and if it is that way what's going to happen well don't go down that road don't go down that road at all okay okay yeah so just a complete random fun bit in the middle of some seriousness here let me ask you uh a few just quick random questions go for it about go for it shoot what, What's your favourite Thai expression uh, or, or saying that we don't really have in English? Is there one? Jip hai. Oops. That's like an exclamation, you know. Okay. Jip hai. Which means? In English it would be, wow. Jip hai. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. What's your, uh, your favourite Thai food, mate? Penang. Geng penang. Pet. Yeah, a penang curry. Co coconut cream curry. 
Do you know, a question that I would ask you usually it would be, but it seems like that you've already got a different answer to, to most people if I ask this question is, okay. okay, you're having a bit of a down day and, and okay, you haven't entertained your negative thoughts, but just right. for some reason there's an ant on you, isn't it? Right. Just, uh, you, you're Things a, don't work out the, you're the way a bit, I'd like You're having a bit of a down day. Yeah, yeah. Where's your happy place? My yeah. happy place is, uh, is, is a reset inside my head. Wow. And that's all I need. I don't need to go anywhere or do anything. I just go for a reset in my head and I think to myself, pinch yourself. You're living in a wonderful place. You've got everything around you you could possibly want. Yep. And I pinch myself to make sure it's not a dream. Wow. So yeah, okay. global reset. Uh, not global reset. Inner, inner, inner head reset. Okay. Where, where's your favourite place in Thailand and, and why? The 50 square wire that, I li that, that my rented house is on. Really? Yeah, because that's, that's where I spend 99.9% .9 of my time. Uh, I have a great relationship with the birds, the okay. lizards, the cats, my dogs. Uh, it's, it's, it's a small area, but it's where I do my work and it's where I spend. What a great mindset, because I personally know this guy, he, 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 he works very hard um, online and, and on his own writings and, and, and for other people. And, and how many hours would you say you do a day? Eight. Yeah. No. I've got two modes. You don't do eight hours a day. I don't think he does do I've got two modes. I, I'm either listening to my favourite music playlist right. and I'm cracking into the work, yep. you know, I'm researching the topic and writing it, or I'm watching something like Snooker on YouTube uh, or listening to a podcast, and that kind of slows me down a bit. I still get on with it, but, but I'm only listening for the audio and I, I give my, my visual, the, I give that to the work. Seven days a week you work? Yeah, I, I calculated the other day in the last seven years, seven and a half years, I've written more than eight million words that are online. I don't know if they're all online now, but that must put me pretty much up there in the top 10 content creators in terms of text. Mm. I write between 100 and 130,000 words a month on all kinds of topics. Okay. And I've got to the point now where it's very rare I need to research a topic. I just go into it. You know. There are the odd occasions, rocket science or something like I that. I guess so, yeah. Writing something down or typing something always puts it in your mind a bit quicker, doesn't it? Just literally so. immerse myself in it because I knew that this is where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. And so it hasn't been a question in my head of how am I going to survive. It's always been a question in my head of thank god i'm in my own paradise you know and and I, i'm a survivor you could dump me in any city in the world with no money and just a passport and i'll survive you know uh, but that's because i i did it for years yeah so yeah i immersed myself in thailand 100 percent because i i want to live here for the rest of my life and the more i know about it the easier that will be here we are, back in the relative comfort of the Padlon. Yeah, for this bit, we're just at the, uh, it's a fishing park. It's quite a popular place, or a popular type of place in Thailand. If you can see, you've got the, the wooden buildings, aircon buildings all the way around. You can rent them out for the night, for the day or whatever. Or you can just get a little spot like in one of the, one of the shelters over there. Um, and I believe there are some 50 kilogram catfish in there. It's not really my cup of tea fishing. I'll sit there and watch other people do it, but I think this place gets quite popular on a Saturday night because through here, um, they have a bit of a live band. People come here and eat and have a few drinks and gin cow. So let's go back to the naughty monkey. You remember my analogy of the naughty monkey as being like the conscious mind? Yeah. Well, the naughty, the word naughty is really, really relevant because kids are only naughty, for example, when they've got excess energy that they haven't been able to use. So what I do with my conscious mind is I use it <coughs> to the maximum uh, 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 that I can on positive stuff i engage with it whether it be work whether it be helping somebody whether it be whatever it might be and because i do that when i when i don't want my mind to go wandering it won't because it's tired 
it's tired it's not naughty now because it's had it's had the exercise it needs and I, I can't stress that enough if you want to be able to control your conscious mind you have to let it off the leash in a controlled way when you're doing stuff engage in stuff 100% and when that's over back on the lead as I said to this podcaster this guy I said to him look I know some things I've learned some things and it's totally transformed my life and if I can find some way of helping other people to see how I got to where I got to and if they're having problems getting there I can help them out with some real nuts and bolts information about okay how do you do this how do you do this if I can do that then I feel I deserve my bliss because not only have I got it for myself, I've tried to help other people get to the same space that I'm at. And everybody can get to the same space that I'm at. So yeah, it's, uh, it's something that I wanna do. It's something I wanna do, is help other people to try and see where I am, you know? I, I'd like to take them down the road that got me there mm. and, 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 and give useful information on how to achieve that, you know. Nuts and bolts stuff. Okay, here's something you can do every day for 15 minutes. Here's something that you can do every morning for 10 minutes. With the, stuff like that. With the final aim of being happy or? Yeah, with the final aim of attaining a level of happiness that no external environment or input can, can, can affect. That's the goal for me. Okay. And I've, I've achieved that goal. You know, I that that I haven't come across any external uh, input yet that can even scratch the veneer I've got over my inner bliss, and uh, I'm quite happy to help other people by showing them or telling them how I got there. You know, and yeah, great stuff. In case you're wondering, I haven't suddenly changed my channel. I'm not suddenly going to turn into Terry Wogan. Um, or the chatty man but you know what for the last year or two I have thought that I should do something like, like this I know a lot of characters shall we say in and around Bangkok and I've met a lot of characters got a lot of acquaintances who are very interesting people I'm not going to go down the line of um, Tyrus Times telling stories because that's just copying isn't it I'm just going to like I said there's a few people I know so I think I'm going to do a series called um a wander with JB or walking with JB or something like that where we go for a walk maybe for a hike sometimes maybe even uh, up a mountain through the markets whatever and chat while we're doing it um, I got Paul today I've already filmed another one with a good friend of mine I'm filming another one on Monday uh, and we'll take it from there I do plan on doing a lot of wandering again soon as well but let me know if you like this video and if you want to see more like this and let me know if you want to see me doing stuff like this but whilst hiking or adventuring through the jungle or up a mountain or something like that.